This might look like a CO2 laser, but it is a new, completely enclosed diode laser designed from Xtool. Up until now, almost all diode lasers had an open frame design with optional enclosures. Xtool has taken an evolutionary leap from that to bring out the S1, which is completely enclosed. But this is not the only enclosed diode laser in the market right now. We have the Lasermatic, Vcreate Vision, and TS3, which we will be comparing with the S1 in this review. The machine came packaged in a box with all the components neatly packed. I really like the packaging. The machine was enclosed in form with a strap around it. I guess it would have made it even without the outer packaging. One thing that made up setup really easy was that the S1 comes mostly pre-assembled right out of the box. All I had to do was slide the laser module into place and it was ready to go. At first look, the S1 has a sleek enclosed design that makes it look like an expensive CO2 laser from Glowforge of Flux. But the S1 is a diode laser. Up until a few years ago, diode lasers were considered toys and they had really low power that maxed out at 5 or 10 watts. But in the last year, we saw diode laser power go up to 20, 40 and 55 watts. The first lasers were also primitive. They just had a laser head and a frame. But with time, manufacturers started adding features like internal air assist tubing to diode lasers as they became popular. The X2 S1 is one such leap in diode laser evolution. It might seem the S1 is one of a kind, but you should know that there are others like it. The Vcreate Vision, Tutri's TS3, Roly Automation's Lasermatic 10 are all similar lasers. The S1 is a class 1 laser product. This means that it's designed in a way that makes it extremely safe to use. It has built-in safety features and precautions to prevent any harm when it's operating. However, you should not confuse it with class 1 lasers. Class 1 lasers, like typical laser pointers, are generally safe for direct exposure. However, laser machines like this use class 4 lasers, which are more powerful and can be dangerous. Direct or even indirect exposure to class 4 lasers can cause harm. Class 1 laser and class 1 laser product are not the same thing. The S1 uses a class 4 laser with safety standards that makes it a class 1 laser product. The outer shell is made from thick, durable ABS and PC plastic. Something cool I found on the S1 is this large viewing window. Usually, the lid would have plastics on all four sides of the window, which means you get a small window. On the S1, the lid is mostly made of see-through material and you can view the entire work area. Even the front side is see-through. The window also blocks the laser beams, so you do not need goggles to view what's happening inside. The door also has sensors that stop the laser from working if it's open. But we figured out a way to make it work with the doors open so that you could see some cool footage. I would not recommend you to do this ever. The whole point of the enclosure and the sensors is your safety. So don't try this at home. Another thing I noticed was that the laser won't work without the base plate properly installed which is a good thing to stop the fumes from escaping the machine. On the front side of the machine, you have a button which is used to start, pause and frame your jobs. It has a light around it which has some cool animations. Depending on the status of the job or the machine, the light glows in different colors. Coming around to the right side, you have an emergency stop switch towards the rear. This is something I didn't like with the P2 as well. Placing the emergency switch towards the front where it's easily accessible makes more sense to me. On the rear side of the machine, we have several ports. This one is for the air assist. This is for the fire extinguishing system. Then we have the ports for connecting to the accessories, PC and the power switch. The exhaust port is also on the rear. You can remove the vent and connect an exhaust pipe here. The exhaust fan is super quiet and does a good job extracting the fumes from the work area. We even took apart the outer covering of the machine and on the inside, there's an all metal frame which is quite sturdy. The control board is at the back and there are sensors for the door and limit switches for the X and Y axis. Tutri's TS3, Lasermatic and Vcreate Vision also have a metal chassis and the TS3 also has a metal enclosure. Interestingly, the enclosure of the Lasermatic is made completely out of acrylic which gives you a full view of the work area. Size-wise, the S1 has a nice compact footprint for desktop use and won't take much room in your shop. It weighs around 44 pounds, so you can move it around. The work area is 19.6 by 12.5 inches, 
when using the 40 watt module. But XES showed me a work area that was less than this. You even get these slats that you can use for placing your workpiece. And on the front and rear of the work area, you have these LED lights. If you were to compare the work area with the TS3, Lasermatic and we create Vision, the Lasermatic has the largest work area at around 16 by 16 inches and the smallest work area is of TS3 which is around 12 by 8 inches. Whereas we create Vision has a large working space along the x-axis with a work area of 16.5 by 11.7 inches. It also features an auto height lifting mechanism which eliminates the need for additional accessory like a riser bed. Coming to the laser side of things, you can choose between three modules on S1, the 20 watt and 40 watt diode laser modules and the 2 watt infrared diode module. All of the modules have the same form factor and the modules are swappable. Xtool centers the 40 watt and the infrared module. Switching between the modules is easy. If you look among the competition, only the Xtool S1 supports an IR module. So if you plan on working extensively on engraving metal and color acrylic, the S1 is a good choice. Also, the 40 watt laser is a big advantage of the S1 over the other machines. Lasermatic 10 and TS3 are 10 watt machines, whereas the Vcreate Vision is a 20 watt one. More power means you can cut thicker materials. For example, the 40 watt can cut up to 25 mm of pine wood. That's nearly an inch. A quick note here I noticed that the fans on the module stay off when the machine is on standby. And because of this, the module heats up considerably. This can be fixed with an update, so it's not a deal breaker. Also, this is a pre-production version, so it might not be there in the production version. The 40 watt diode laser module is designed for cutting organic materials like wood and leather. It has a 0.1 by 0.15 mm part size and produces a visible blue laser beam with a wavelength of 445 nanometers. This part size will give you a small curve when cutting and if you're using it for engraving, you can get a maximum resolution of 254 dpi. However, if your primary use is going to be engraving, you should consider the 20 watt module. It has a spot size of 0.06 by 0.08 millimeter, which means you can get a maximum dpi of around 420. You also have the option to use an infrared laser module operating at 1064 nanometer wavelength. You can't cut but can engrave well on materials like metals and plastics. You can process a lot of different materials with these modules. I'll put them on screen. So those were the materials that the S1 can process. What materials can you process? I mean, if you're a beginner, learning the ropes of lasers could be an overwhelming task, which is why I have decided to use my years of experience to teach light burn and lasers in an easy to follow way with our light burn masterclass course. Now I know what you're thinking. Is this just another course? Well, it's not. What makes this course different is the live weekly training and the one-on-one -on -one support we offer in this course. This course is like getting a personal trainer for light burn. We also offer a no questions asked money back guarantee. So pay only if you like the course. So do check out the course linked in the description below. Now let's get back. Coming to the transmission part, the S1 uses belt drives on the X and Y axis to move the laser head. These are supported by sturdy steel rollers and steel rails. The X-axis uses one stepper motor, while the Y-axis has one motor in the middle with the shaft coming out at either end that ensures the same timing is kept on both ends of the gantry. This is good for preventing issues like racking and misalignment. For focusing, the S1 uses a rack and pinion system on the Z-axis to move the laser head. This, along with the distance sensor, allows auto-focusing of the laser beam. The competition also uses a similar transmission setup to drive the laser head, but the Lasermatic 10 doesn't have a motorized Z-axis and you have to use a turning knob on the laser head to adjust the focus. In terms of transmission speed, S1 and Vcreate Vision has the same speed of around 600 mm per second, which is fast enough for most applications without sacrificing quality. TS3 has the lowest speed at 165 mm per second and Lasermatic 10 comes in between 400 mm per second. However, you should also know that the high speed is only useful over large distances. Over short moves, the head won't have enough time to accelerate to full speed. All of these machines use a drag chain but only the S1 and the TS3 has it on both the X and Y axis. 
On laser matic 10 and v create vision it's only available for the y axis and cables running along the x that connect to the laser modules are open. Beyond the build quality and performance, the X2 Less One has some unique features that sets it apart. First is the safety key. It's a USB key that you have to insert into a USB port on the rear. When it's not inserted, the machine will remain inoperable. Another feature is the detachable distance sensor for engraving on curved surfaces. This allows the laser to focus on complex curved surfaces. The laser adjusts the focus as the object curves. Then you have the flame detectors in the S1, two sensors each on the front and back end and one on the module itself. These are really good at detecting flame and when they detect fire, the laser stops automatically and moves to the home position. S1 also has a twin point positioning function. You get into the wizard and move your laser to a corner on your workpiece, press the button, then move it to the diagonally opposite corner and press the button again. And using this information, XCS draws a rectangle which you can use to place your design more accurately without the need for a camera, which is pretty neat. The S1 also has encoders on its motors, which means the controller knows where the laser head is at all times. This is particularly useful when positioning your workpiece. You mark the center or corner of your workpiece, then place the laser crosshair on the mark and you will be able to see a crosshair on XCS, which corresponds to the position of the laser head. Now you can place your design centered using this crosshair and when you engrave it, you'll get a perfectly placed design on your workpiece. Looking at the other features, there is Wi-Fi and Type-C USB connection options. The Wi-Fi option also allows you to manage the S1 remotely from a PC, smartphone or tablet. You can start jobs, monitor progress and receive alerts without standing right next to the machine. Some nice extras on the S1 are the air assist port and exhaust system. You can connect an air assist compressor to the port on the rear and there is internal tubing that brings the air all the way to the nozzle to blow away smoke and debris when cutting. The exhaust port on the rear pulls all the smoke from inside the machine and pushes it out through the exhaust pipe that you can connect to the port after removing the vent. We create Vision, Lasermatic 10 and TS3 also have an integrated exhaust system but unlike the others, the TS3 doesn't support an air assist. Something I must stress on is how quiet the machine is. On the 40 watt module with the air assist set to maximum, the noise levels are around 68 decibels, which includes the noise from the exhaust. For comparison, my Xtool D1 Pro makes around 75 decibels without air assist and exhaust system. The new air assist pump is really quiet and has rubber feet to reduce vibrations. And the exhaust fan on the S1 is also super quiet. When it comes to software, Xtool gives you two options. First is their own Xtool Creative Space, which is free to use. It has built-in design resources and regularly receives updated features. For beginners, this is a great software as the learning curve is small and you can start making products right away. The second option is Lightburn, which is a paid software. This is more full-featured and gives you more customization and options for advanced users. Xtool provides the configuration file for Lightburn so that the settings are optimized. However, some Xtool proprietary functions like the curved surface engraving is not supported on Lightburn. Over the years, Xtool has managed to develop several accessories for their machines. The S1 supports the fire suppression system. You hook it up to one of the device ports on the back and connect the inlet pipe to the port on the back. And when there is a fire, the exhaust system pumps CO2 gas into the work area to put out the fire. Then you have the RA2 Pro rotary accessory which is a great tool if you want to work on spherical or cylindrical objects. I have tested it and I have posted a video about it, you can check it out. You can also get a honeycomb workbed for the S1 which is useful for cutting. The honeycomb also comes with these magnetic work holding tabs. The tabs are easy to use and provides good clamping. 
Then you have a riser base that lets you work on workpieces with a maximum thickness of around 5 inches. If you plan on using the laser for cutting jobs, then you must have an air assist. I have a video on how you can convert your sharp compressor into an air assist. However, Xtool also offers an air assist. This is a new one. It draws power directly from the S1 and turns on and off automatically. But you also have the manual option as well. Another interesting accessory is the automatic pass-through like the one we saw with the P2. You will be able to process long workpieces with it. Xtool has two versions of the riser base, one that supports the conveyor feeder and is rated class 4 in laser safety standards as it's open from below. The other version is the class 1 laser safety standard version which is the one that we got but it doesn't support the conveyor feeder. When compared to the other competition on the market right now, the S1 seems like a good deal in my opinion. No other option offers a 40 watt version but this would only matter if you plan on doing a lot of cutting. If you plan on using your laser for engraving, the S1 has the smallest part size of the lot. Also the S1 has an infrared module upgrade you can purchase. Among these machines, the S1 and the Vision are the fastest at 600mm per second and they are the only ones that offer a 20W module. The Vision costs around $100 less than the x S1 as of now. But the S1 gives you a smaller spot size. You can get a maximum resolution of 423 dpi on the S1 compared to 317 dpi on the Vision. But I would also say that I do almost all of my engraving at 254 dpi and they look good. Other than that, the S1 uses a probe for autofocus and the Vision uses a camera. The S1 also offers a larger work area and with the S1 you also have the option to use their automatic conveyor feeder to work on long work pieces like with the P2. So is the X2 S1 worth buying? If you want a laser that you can use indoors, the S1 is a good choice at this price point. The 20 watt version is available for $1600 now and the 40 watt for $2000. Xtool also offers two bundles. The rotary bundle with RA2 Pro and the riser base for $300 about the base variant price. And the all-in-one kit with conveyor feeder, RA2 Pro and riser base for $700 about the base variant price. The safety features and the enclosed design makes it a good option for use in a home environment. The laser also runs quieter than others. With changeable laser modules, a beefy 40 watt diode laser, pass through ability for large workpieces, safety features and autofocus, the x 2 S1 is an incredibly versatile machine. Also the 1 year warranty, extended coverage and good support gives peace of mind. With safety features like fire detection and smoke exhaust, x 2 didn't cut corners. It's beginner friendly as well as packs features that advanced users will appreciate. Also, the accessories options allow you to handle a wide variety of projects. Among the enclosed diode lasers, x 2 S1 is a good choice if you want maximum work area along with high speed and power. So let me know in the comments whether you would be investing your money in the S1. I'll also add discount codes if any in the description below, so do check out the description if you plan on buying the S1. I also have an article on the S1, if you want to read it, the link is in the description. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please click the like button. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Also, don't forget to check out our tutorial videos to learn more about lasers and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. It goes a long way. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be seeing you in the next one.